Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter Number 6, The Progeny of the Daughters of Daksha. Okay, beginning text number 8. The two sons who took birth from the womb of Marut Bhati were Marut Van and Jayanta. Jayanta 
who is an expansion of Lord Vasudev, is known as Upendra. Text 9. The demigods named the Mohurtikas took birth from the womb of Mohurta. These demigods deliver the results of action to the living entities of, of the Maybe. The demigods deliver the results of actions to the living entities of their respective times. See if there's any purport on this. No, no purport. Alright, text 10 and 11. The son of Sankalpa was known as Sankalp, and from him lust was born. The sons of Vasu were known as the eight Vasus. Just hear their names from me, Drona, Prana, Dhruva, Arka, Agni, Dosha, Vastu and Vibha Vasu. From Abhimati, the wife of the Vasu named Drona were generated the sons named Harsha, Shoka, Baya. Again, there's no purport here. We'll keep going. Text number 12. Urjaspati, the wife of Prana, gave birth to three sons named Saha, Ayush and Purojava. The wife of Dhruva was known as Durani and from her womb various cities took birth. We don't know how cities could take birth from a womb but still that's what we're told. Text number 13. From the womb of Vasana, the wife of Arka, came many sons, headed by Tarsha, Dara, the wife of the Vasu, named Agni, gave birth to many sons. headed by Dravinaka. Again, no purport. Alright, text number 14. From Kritika, another wife of Agni, came the son named Skanda, Kartikeya, whose sons were headed by Vishaka. From the womb of from the womb of Sarvan, from the womb of Sarva, Sarvari, the wife of the Vasu named Dosha, came the son named Sishumara, who was an expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Not getting any purpose in this section here.
Okay, text number 15. From Angi Rasa, the wife of the Vasu named Vastu, was born the great architect Vishwakarma. Vishwakarma became the husband of Ar Ar Akriti, from whom the Manu named Chakshusa was born. The sons of Maru were known as the Vishwadevas and Sadyas. Again, no purport. Text number, text number 16. Osha, the wife of Viba Vasu, gave birth to three sons, Vyusta, Rochisa, and Atapa. From Atapa came Panchayama, the spawn of the span of day. From, from Atapa came Panchayama, the span of day, who awakens all living entities to material activities. Okay. Text 17 and 18. Sarupa, the wife of Buddha, gave birth to the 10 million Rudras, of whom the 11 principal Rudras were Raivata, Aja, Bhava, Bhima, Vama, Ogra, Vrishakapi, Ajay Kapat, Ahir Brada, Ahir Bradna, Bahuru, Bahuru and Mahan, their associates, the ghosts and goblins, who are very fearful were born of the outer ring. But they were born from the outer they were born of the other wife of Buddha. The associates, the ghosts and goblins who are very fearful were born of the other wife of Buddha. There's a purport. Srila Prabhupada says Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comments that Buddha and two wives, one of them, Sati Rupa, one of, one of them, Sarupa, gave birth to the eleven Rudras, and the other wife gave birth to the associates of the Rudras, known as the ghosts and hobgoblins. Text 19 The Prajapati Angira had two wives named Swada and Sati. The wife named Swada accepted all the pitas as her sons and Sati accepted the Atarvangira the Atarva Giras Vrida as her son. Don't quite know what that is, but anyway. Going on text number 20. Krishashva had two wives named Arches and Dishana. In the wife named Arches, he begot Dumaketu, and in Dishana, he begot four sons named 
Vedasira, Devala, Vayuna and Manu. There is no purport, we'll go to text 21 and 22. Kashyapa, who is also named Taksha, had four wives Vinata or Suparna, Kadru, Patangi, and Yamini. Patangi gave birth to many kinds of birds, and Yamini gave birth to gave birth to locusts. Vinata gave birth to Garuda, the carrier of Lord Vishnu, and to Anu and to Anuru or Ar Aruna, the qu quickest definition or the carrier of Lord Vishnu and to Anuru or Aruna, the chaste wife of the sun god Kadru, gave birth to different varieties of planets. Mm -hmm. O Maharaj Pariksit, best of the Bharats, the constellations named Kritika were all wives of the moon god. However, because Prajapati Daksha had cursed him to suffer from a disease causing gradual destruction, the moon god could not beget children in any of his wives. Purport. Because the moon god was very much attached to Rohini, he neglected all his other victions. Because the moon god was very much attached to Rohini, he neglected all his other wives. Therefore, seeing the bereavement of these daughters, Prajapati Daksha became angry and cursed him. Then takes 24 to 26. Therefore the king of the moon pacified Prajapati Daksha with courteous words and thus regained the portions of light he had lost during his disease. Nevertheless he could not, he could no longer beget children. The moon loses his shining power during the dark fortnight and in the bright fortnight it is manifest again. O killer Parikshit, now please, now please hear from me, now please hear from me the names of Kashyapa's wives from whose wombs the population of the entire universe has come. They are the mothers of almost all the population of the entire universe and their names are very auspicious to hear. They are Aditi, Diti, Drona, Mm. 
Okay, they are Aditi, Diti, Dano, Kasta, Arishta, Surasa, Ila, Muni, and, and then Krodavasa, Tamra, Surabi, Sur Sarama, and Timi. From the womb of Timi all the aquatics took birth, and from the womb of Sarama the ferocious animals like the tigers and lions became more noticeable. Again, there's no purport to this verse. Okay, we're up to text number 23. O Maharaj Parikshit, best of the Bharats, the constellations named Kritika were all wives of the Moon God. However, because Prajapati Daksha had cursed him to suffer from a disease causing gradual destruction, the Moon God could not beget children in any of his wives. Purport by Srila Prabhupada Because the Moon God was very much attached to Rohini, he neglected all his other wives. Therefore, seeing the bereavement of these daughters, Seeing the bereavement of these daughters, Prajapati Daksha became angry and cursed and cursed him. My dear King Parikshit, from the womb of Surabi, the buffalo, cow and other animals with cloven hooves took birth. From the womb of Tamra, the eagle, vultures and other large birds of prey took birth. And from the womb of Muni, the angels took birth.
text 31, the sons born of Krodavasa were the serpents known as Dandathok as well as well as other serpents and the mosquitoes. All the various creepers and trees were born from the womb of Ila. The Rakshasas had spices or oh, the, the Rakshasas bad the Rakshasas bad spirits were born from the womb of Sur Asa. Text 29 and 31, up to 31. The Gandharvas were born from the womb of Arishta and animals with hooves not, which are not split, such as a horse, were born from the womb of Kashta. O king, from the womb of Danu, camel, oh, from the womb of Danu came sixty-one sons of whom three of, of whom these eighteen were very important. Uh, Dvimurda, Sambara, Arishta, Hayagriva, Vibhavasu, Ayalmukha, San, Sanmukhara. From the womb of Danu came sixty-one sons. Of these, eighteen were very important. And then the eighteen I mentioned. Rimurda, Sambara, Arista, Hayagriva, Vibhavasu, Ayanmukha, Sanku, Sankustra, Swarbano, Kapila, Aruna, Puloma, Vrisha Parva, Eka Chakra, Anutaparna, Dumrakesha, Virupakesha, Viprachita. Text number 32, the daughter of Swarbano named Suprabha was married by Namuchi. The daughter of Parva named Samishta was given to the powerful king Yayati, the son of Nahusa. Text 33 to 36. Vaishvanara, the son of Danu, had four beautiful daughters named Upa, Upadanavi, Hayasira, Puloma, and Kalaka. Hiranyaksha married Upa, Upadanavi, and Kratu married Hayashirsha. Thereafter, at the request of Lord Brahma, Prajapati Kashyapa married Puloma and Kalaka, the other two daughters of Vaishvan, Vaishvanara. From the womb of these two wives of Kashyapa came 60,000 sons, headed by Nivita Kavacha, who are known as the Polomas and the Kalakiyas. They were physically very strong and expert in fighting and their aim and their aim was to disturb their aim was their aim was to disturb the sacrifices performed by the great sages. My dear king, 
When your grandfather Arjuna went to the heavenly planets, he alone killed all these demons and thus King Indra became extremely affectionate towards him. Text 37 In his wife, Samika Viprachiti begot one hundred and one sons. He begot one hundred and one sons of whom the eldest is Rahu and the others are the one hundred Ketus. All of them attain positions in the influential planet. Text 38 and 39. Now please hear me as I describe the descendants of Aditi in chronological order. In this dynasty, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Narayan descended by his plenary expansion. The names of the sons of Aditi are as follows Vishwavasu. Aryama, Pusha, Twashta, Savita, Bhaga, Data, Vidal, Pusha, Twashta, Savita, Bhaga, Data, Vida, Vidata, Varuna, Mitra, Shatru, and Urukrama. Yeah, there's no purports, there's all just text, you know. Samgyana, the wife of Vishabha, Vivaswan, the sun god, gave birth to the Manu named Shraddhadev, and the same fortunate wife also gave birth to the twins Yamaraj and the river Yamuna. Then Yam Then Yami, while wandering on the earth in the form of a mare gave birth to the Ashwini Kumaras. Text 41 Jaya, another wife of the sun god, begot two sons named Sanaischara and Savarni Manu and one daughter Tapati who married Samvarana. No purport. Text number 42. 
from the womb of Matrika, the wife of Aryama, were born many learned scholars. Among them Lord Brahma created the human species, which are endowed with an aptitude for self-examination. Pusha had no sons. When Lord Shiva was angry at Daksha, Pusha had laughed at Lord Shiva and shown his teeth. Therefore he lost his teeth and had to live by eating only ground flour. Text 44 Rachana, the daughter of the Daichas, became the wife of Prajapati Twashta, and by his semen he begot in her womb two very powerful sons named Sunny Vesha and Vishwarupa. Although Vishwarupa was the son of the daughter of their eternal enemies, the demons, the demigods accepted him as their priest in accordance with the order of Brahma when they were abandoned by their spiritual master Brihaspati, whom they had disrespected. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the sixth canto sixth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Progeny of the Daughters of Daksha. So Prabhupada refrains from giving any purports on these verses. Anyway, next chapter will be more uh, Helpful. Chapter 7 Indra offends his spiritual master Brihaspati. So we're going to hear in chapter 7 about how Indra offended Brihaspati and that resulted in the, the demons defeating the demigods. Indra is the king of heaven, so he leads the demigods, but he offended the guru of the demigods, Brihaspati. And the result was Brihaspati went away and left the, the demigods and because they didn't have the help of their spiritual teacher, they got defeated by the demons. The demons were led by Bali Maharaj. And they were, and Shukra Acharya was the guru of the demons, and Shukra Acharya was very powerful. At one point, Bali Maharaj had been killed in the fight between the demigods and the demons, but Shukra Acharya brought him back to life. So, Ch Shukra Acharya was so powerful. He could do all these amazing things. But he was a guru of the demons. And he's mentioned also in chapter 10 of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna talks and mentions in the Vibhuti Yogas, he talks about Sukracharya. He's one of Lord Krishna's opulences. Although he is a guru of the demons. So tomorrow we can read chapter 7. Alright, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.